Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 A War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing our run of the Rise of the Robots campaign. To remind ourselves, it is a campaign where we're only allowed to use Psy Operatives, Templars and Sparks. And soon Templars and uh, Psy Ops will come to life. That's probably the last mission where we need Hogbite to carry us through. This mission, however, is going to be quite um, painful, I should say. And uh, VIP rescue mission usually is pretty difficult. And we got the same standard team as before. It's really not much more that we can get. We have a bit of cover removal, that's fair. We got uh, bonding, that's more than we can expect. And uh, flashbang and some anti psionic measures. And that's pretty much it. I hope that we will be successful because a scientist and a hundred and four intel are just what we need to kickstart this campaign. Good. This time we're starting Johannesburg. It is not far to the evac, but we are starting without any concealment. And that is bad. Very bad. So we got some high ground over here, which might lead all the way to where we want to go. Let's take a look and hopefully no one is on top of the roof. Nope. That's a fantastic start. Double time. VIP moves over. Hogbite most certainly moves over in True Rebel. Yeah, this one time we can leave him without cover. Good. The team stays put together and I think I'm going to abuse this right hand side here because I'm pretty sure there will be a little, little to no resistance over here. True Rebel moves up. No resistance is predicted. Let's check if someone is in the building. That's negative as well. And finally, our VIP moves up and just hunkers down. We got 11 rounds. Are we able to do that? Probably yes. Good. So there is some enemy movement right here. Probably in front of the building, if I was to take a guess. Still no one. Careful movement. All right, hunkering down. Everybody else is on overwatch. And we're slowly but surely moving closer to the target, which if you follow XCOM uh, logic, there will be a pack that is trying to kind of move between us and the target. So it's very likely that, yeah, soon we're going to engage someone. Unfortunately, we did not hit. That per definition stinks. That's a kill on the least important target and a kill on a uh, medium important target. So two kills. Matter of fact, these guys, by the way, have now earned, I think, quite a few promotions. So I wouldn't be surprised if I was actually to promote them. They would kind of promote thrice or even four times. DM moves up. And that's a nice execution. Good job, man. Yeah, we're 
we're carefully moving forward. I almost suggest there is another pack down here, which is the only reason why I am so careful. No movement. That's not necessarily a good sign. One over here, opening the field. Okay. Moving on target location. Copy that. I am expecting another pack to move into us relatively soon. Lots and lots and lots of overwatch. Let's hope we're getting another nice overwatch trap. Yeah, there we go. It's the second pack I was thinking about. Uh, true rebel, second time that he misses. Did so well so far. Now he Fs it up pretty badly. Moving a tiny bit back. This might be a good shot. Oh, fantastic. That's a stun lancer hit. Gotta be a bit careful with our seven remaining rounds. Let's prime this guy for a hundred percent kill. Very nice. It worked like a charm. And hog bite can pick up the kill. There we go. That's two focus. Straight up filling ourselves up to the max, and we are parrying. Hunger down. I think there is a third pack somewhere. For now we should be fine. Oh wow, he's burning. Oh, you re for real. Gotta speed this here up just a tiny bit. We got an outloader and that's so important uh, to keep momentum. I talked about that oftentimes. You now see yet another reason why an outloader makes a ton of sense. The burning is a problem. Can't really do anything other than hunkering down. However, we got three overwatches. So we should get this guy. There we go. Killed him. And if another pack runs into us, we would have been fine with uh, two additional Overwatches to go. Five more rounds. Careful. There we go. That's the pull. Okie dokie. So here's a fun experiment. That should be three points of damage. Falling down is two additional points of damage. One additional point for falling onto the snake. And that should kill him, which in return 
should deal enough damage to let him explode. Okay, all right. Close enough. All right, we almost will one shot uh, the stun lancer. Five rounds, we're okay. We can. Do that extra movement. Nice little shot, by the way. Moving, out. Moving into a flanking position. VIP stays behind. I mean, Hogbite could vault, which will then spring over and kill the other guy. Might as well do that. We can't kill the Viper otherwise. But the explosion of it can kill the Viper. So a little bit of indirect um, game knowledge applied and all of a sudden the enemies are dead so i think pretty much that that should have been it let's double check no one all right one i can do that two Three, four. Yeah, no more enemies left over. So it's all about the victory lap. That final kill where Hogbite got a two for one. Fantastic. Okay, rookies are still staying strong, even in month number three. I wonder if there could be a Rise of the Rookies challenge where you are in essentially um, just playing through the entire game with rookies and still beating it. It's probably possible. I would build it a bit different, but six rookies with good equipment can beat endgame missions. And we are landing. Come on. A promotion for Hogbite is the least that you can do. Oh, so stingy. This guy has done 10 missions more than anyone else. 45 kills. Are you serious? We're not even giving him the de deserved promotion. That is petty. Okay, plated armor down to 9 days. That's great. Uh, our research machinery has just gone full force at this point. And with the exception of Hogbite not getting his promotions, everything else is fine. I like it. Avenger power, I will get that. Because guess what? That is indirectly kind of as good as an engineer, because we need the power. Perfect. Got 17 ability points. Uh, that's even better. Let's assign a new covert ops mission, reducing the upper... <laughs> no, why? I wanted to do the reduction of the Avatar project. <sighs> that is really bad. Giving someone a promotion here. <laughs> Yay, Hogbite can't be taken. So, what you're saying is you can take a rookie and get him another promotion, that's it? Plus a soldier's bond. You know what? The soldier's bond is actually not too bad 
the rookies tend to uh, tend to be okay with it. So let's get Hayward and Toxic a bond. Yeah, I guess it's okay. Like I said, the resistance ring in this run is definitely not meeting my expectations. It's not working out uh, due to the class limitation and me playing it strict and not using uh, the other classes for the Covert Ops missions. Now, finally, we got the room and the Psy Lab costs us 20 Larium Crystals. Wait a second. Insufficient, oh, insufficient power 5. Hmm. Well told you it's indirectly one of them as soon as we have finished the scanning uh, we will withdraw the engineer and let's also not fool ourselves guerrilla tactics school is good but it is not as important as getting that psy lab going 20 days is long enough but then we finally can train psionically active characters gosh and this is why psy rushes are difficult to pull off it's even more difficult if you're trying to get sparks at the same time we got enough intel which may which may motivate us to actually go and make contact, but the Avenger power is also important. Good, we got our first spark. Fantastic. Let's begin doing the skull drag, just in case. I don't see an immediate time need for that. Ninety days. Wow. You know what? Might as well prior to the next mission get that squad side upgrade, squad size upgrade. So let's finish the guerrilla tactic school. That also gives us access to PCSs, which are much needed. <laughs> okay. So undying loyalty, we gotta hack that computer. That's gonna be tough. But we get a scientist, so this is already the given mission. And we have beast-like creatures, which means a lot of um, faceless ones at this point, and maybe a berserker or two. Yeah, we're probably going to get that pretty likely and there's another engineer which we could uh, reasonably need at this point but yeah we're going to to do that next before we do that though let's take a look at and admire that finally we got our first spark amongst all of the uh, promotable rookies we got a spark and I love it I love it okay so first of all since it's the first spark you know, let's uh, give it a sort of cool color for your father he was, uh, something of a miracle worker getting the Avengers power back online was a miracle I'm not entirely sure how he deciphered their system but we'd still be half buried in the sand if he hadn't. Yeah, we're going to give him Everything he had to also a bit more dangerous looking hat. He didn't live long enough to see her fly. We owe you both a debt of gratitude. You can honor his memory by using this ship to destroy the All right. Well, it starts uh, looking better and better. In terms of equipment, character info, I would like to go with Primus as the first one. And in terms of their loadout, heavy auto cannon, I think we can even upgrade that a bit. And we only got the rocket launcher. 
I like the expanded magazine for overdrive. It's not much, but it is something. And let's see if we can upgrade their weapons as well. I like the Psyams, but uh, that's out of um, question at this point. Hmm. Yeah, I think we gotta research. I think we gotta research those weapons. It's part of. It's part of the ghost weapon and then heavy weapon trail. It is what it is. We're, we're not going to get it uh, now. The next one is going to be advanced mech breakdown because I want to have blue screen rounds and start building those because we're very soon uh, going to have armor and it's just an no all regret move to take blue screen rounds it's by far the strongest item and probably face this autopsy for mimic beacons might be another play so getting the strong utility items first we're ignoring all of the promotions with the propaganda campaign. And yeah, three more days for plated armor, but we got a spark with us. Finally, someone whom we can actually level up. And uh, hilariously enough, we could even start building the Psy Lab and get a lot of uh, things done without even triggering uh, the timer for the Doom Clock, which is fantastic as well. So. Things are looking definitely up. I am excited about the state of the campaign. And if you're ex as excited as I am, then how about you subscribe to the channel, link um, and like the video, plus leave a comment. That would be much appreciated. That helps the channel and helps us being excited together. Take care, guys, and see you in the next run. Bye-bye.